So if you're looking to use the Trade and View mobile app, well, don't worry, I got you. So let's get into it. All right, so first let's start with something simple. We hit the charting button and immediately you'll see that we have um, a stock chart, a candlestick stock chart with some moving averages on the screen and some information up near the top. If you're wondering what all that is, don't worry, I'm about to explain it all right now. So first of all, that little green dot is letting you know that the market is open. So that green dot next to the word Etsy, if I click that, you'll see that it gives me an overview of what's going on. It's saying the market is open and it closes in two minutes. And then that little red squiggly line that says, um, the real-time data for Etsy is being provided by the CBOE or the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. Uh, this data is real-time, but it's significantly different to its official counterpart from the NASDAQ. So it's just letting you know, A, the market is open, and B, who that I'm getting real-time data and who I'm getting that real-time data from. All right. So that's all that's letting you know. You can see to the left, you can see the bid and ask. So the bid right now is 148 or 147. It's changing because it's real time. And then the ask is 148.09 if you were going to trade that stock. Now, let's get into some of the settings that you see here. So I'm using a candlestick chart, but what if you wanted a line chart? What if you wanted an area chart or a bar chart? I'm going to show you how to change all of that right now. So if you hit the little uh, three dots, not the little sunshine, but let's go to the little sparkling sunshine above the three dots. If you hit that, that just allows you to reset your price scale or lock in your price to bar ratio. Um, do you want the regular look? Do you want the percentage look? Um, so it's just different ways that you can get the information. Like instead of uh, giving me the numbers, I want to know the percent that the stock is up or down for the day on the chart. Different things like that you can have on the chart, but most people are going to have regular and you can change your time zone down here. So if you're in a different time zone than Eastern Standard, you can also change that as well. Now, let's go to the three dots that are right below that. So you click the three dots and this is where you start to see some of the ways that you can change your settings on the chart. So number one, you got your date range. So let's just say you're a day trader. You can hit one day. And now I'm just looking at, once it refreshes, I'm just looking at one day worth of data and I'm also looking at one minute. You see that one minute pop down there in the bottom? So sometimes I might just wanna look at one day, but I don't wanna look at one minute. So if you click on that one minute, you can change it to a five minute chart. So you're still looking at just one day's worth of data and then you can zoom in and say, you know, what happened on a uh, five minute basis. Okay. And the way that I'm making this screen bigger. So if you, if you do that and your screen looks super compressed like that, and you're like, I can't see any of the data, just take two fingers and just stretch out from each other. So if you want to pinch and go in, it makes it smaller. Um, but stretch out from each other. So pinch outward on the price pane off to the right side where the prices are at and then you will get this bigger view of your five minute chart. Now, if you wanna see a little bit more time, pinch in on the middle of the screen and you'll see it's giving me more of the five minute candlestick bars so that I can see what's going on. So right now I have a one day chart. So I'm only looking at one day's worth of information, but I'm looking at five minutes. Now let's go ahead and switch that back. So I'm gonna hit my three dots. I'm gonna switch that to a six month charts. That's usually what I trade in. And then again, it looks a little weird. So first let's change it from two hours because two hours for six months is going to give you too much data. So we're going to click the two hours and we're going to switch this to one day. So now you have a one day, six month chart. Now, again, this looks a little bit uh, congested or funky. So remember we stretched out the chart because we wanted to see the five minutes now we're going to bring the chart back and compress it now that we're looking at a daily time frame so we want to pinch together on the time frame and then you can see here and let me actually pinch out a little bit and then zoom out and now you can see this is what the stock looks like on a six month daily chart and if you want to see more time you can just swipe left to right or you can pinch together, but it's gonna keep compressing the data, making it very, very small or hard for you to read. 
Also keep in mind, I'm using this in the vertical position. You can also rotate your phone and put it in the landscape position as well. All right. So that's how you switch between a intraday chart and minutes or hours or switch back to a month or weekly chart and use days. So that's how you're going to do that. Now let's talk about what if you don't want a candlestick chart or what if you don't even want these moving averages on here? So let's remove everything and then build the chart from the ground up. So you'll see there's a five on the screen. That lets you know that I have five different indicators on the chart. I have the you know moving averages and I have the volume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on all the moving averages. And once you click on them, you'll see a little X. That X will allow you to close them out or you can just hide them. So if for, some, for example, if I didn't want to delete them, I just wanna hide them for demonstration purposes, purposes, I can just click on the eyeball and just hide them. So I'll click on volume and hide that as well. And voila, now you just have a very vanilla chart with nothing on it. So let's talk about uh, switching it between a candlestick chart, line chart, bar chart, so we're going to go to the bottom right, hit our three dots, and then you're going to see something that says chart type. Go ahead and click chart type. You can hit bars, and that's going to switch it to what's called an open bar chart. You can go back, hitting the three dots again, go to chart type, and then go ahead and click on candlesticks. You're going to get a candlestick chart. Go back one more time, hit chart type. If you want an area chart, it's going to give you the line with the area underneath it. Now I'm going to go back to candlestick. And so you can play with any other charts that you want, just a line chart, a Renko chart, a Hinken Ashi chart, any type of chart that, you know, you do your type of trading to, you can switch to it. I'm going to stick with candlestick chart for now, but I also want to show you a couple of things about the candlestick chart. And if you double tap on the screen, like I'm going to do right here, boom, double tap, you can change your body color. So if you don't like the green and red that I have, like a red is a down candlestick and a green is a up candlestick, you can say, I want up to be uh, a white candlestick and I want down to be black candlestick. Go ahead and hit okay. And you can see how it's filled in um, black if it's down, white if it's up, but it's outlined, the body is outlined still in green or red. So if I double click that, you see how it says borders? So I can change that if I don't like the green or red border, I can say I want a blue border around everything. So I'm gonna make both of them blue. And so now you see that I have a white candlestick for up, a black candlestick for down, but it's also a blue border outlined in the candlestick. Does that make sense? So you can just really customize this how you want. I'm gonna put this back to how I like it. I like to have a green up, I like to have a red down. And I like to have just a, a regular green up body around mine. And I like to have a red body just to keep it consistent um, so that it looks like that for me. But you can change this and modify it however you want. You can also, um, if you want like extended hours trading to be on your screen, you click that and say, I wanna see extended hours, which is pre-market or aftermarket, you can have that on your chart as well. Um, for this, I just have regular trading, but if I were to add extended hours trading on there, um, then I would hit okay. And it'll start to, well, the market just closed. So if there's any after hours trading, uh, you should see that on your chart. And then you can, um, you know, understand that this color from yellow over is what happened after hours. You see how it's kind of a light yellow or orange? You'll start to see like anything in that orange area is what's happening after hours. Or um, I apologize, the orange is gonna be pre-market and then the second color is gonna be after hours. So if I wanna make after hours uh, pink or purple, we'll just go with purple. So my after hours will be purple, my pre-market will be orange. I hope that makes sense. So just hit okay. And then if there's any after hours or pre-market um, activity, you'll see it uh, in those color codes right there. Now where you'll see that the most, you won't see that really on a day chart because 
this is for one whole day. So where you would really see that is if you were to switch back, and let me show you just for demonstration purposes, where you would really see that if you switch to a day chart and we switch back to a five minute, and then we um, have to zoom out our pricing. So if this stock was trading after hours, that's where we would technically uh, see the color, start to see the color change uh, happening, but it doesn't look like they have any after hours action on this particular stock. Um, so we don't see anything. All right. So let's, let's actually switch to a different, um, let's switch to a different stock. So you're going to do that by clicking on the stock name at the bottom. And then, so here we go. I pulled up Apple. And the reason I wanted to pull up Apple, I wanted you to see what I meant by this new color here is going to show you the after hours. So this these two candlesticks are happening in the after hours and it's in that pink area which is what how you can easily identify like oh the market's closed and this is what's happening after the market has closed all right now let's go ahead and switch this back to a six month chart let's switch this back to a one day chart and then let's go ahead and bring our pricing by pinching our fingers right back into uh, what we what we want to call a normal um, a normal view. All right. So now and then we can zoom in and now it starts to look like a regular um, chart here. Right. So we're zoomed in regular candlesticks. You can see your date across the bottom. All right. Let's go back into the three dots and talk about a couple other things that you can do. You can also connect a broker if you have a Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade account. If you just click connect broker, it's going to say choose your broker um, that you want to you know, add to here. Now, technically, you have to add your broker on the desktop. Um, and if you do, then it'll show up right here on the mobile version. But for now, uh, they just have their paper trading version in there. All right. Go back to the three dots. A couple other things that I want to show you. Alert management. So what you can do is you can set an alert. So let's just say I wanted to set an alert on Apple. I'm going to hit this plus alarm clock down here in the bottom right. And I'm going to say doing regular trading hours. OK, and I'm going to say um, you could say if Apple's crossing up or down or below something, I want to know about it. Um, do you want to know about it once or every time? So, for example, I wanted to say if I want to know when Apple's value is crossing um, up above 170. So I might say, send me an alert when Apple value crosses above 170. That means if it goes 170 and 10 cents, they're going to send me an alert. And do I want to know every time or just that once? Maybe just that once. And then when do I want to know by? Like, do I not care after a certain amount of time or do I want to always know um, if it trades above 170? Because maybe that's when you would like to buy the stock. So you can call this alert um, buy Apple alert. Right. So you'll get an alert to buy Apple when it's crossing up above 170. So if I hit create and I will have that alert. Now, if you look on the uh, map here, you'll see like a little bit of arrow pointing at 170. That's because I have an alert set there now. So if I double click that little arrow and that little uh, hyphenated line, it's going to pull up the alert that I had. So if I want to delete it, all I have to do is just hit the delete button. It'll ask if I'm sure. And then boom, your alert should be gone. Now I have two alerts. So I'm going to delete them both. Um, so there you go. So both my Apple alerts at 170 are gone. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you feel more informed and more empowered on how to use the Trading View app. Again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like, and then also hit the subscribe button for more tutorials. And if you're brand new to the stock market or you're struggling to become a profitable trader, be sure to check out Power Trades University and some of our free resources in the description of how we can help you become a better trader and possibly use stocks combined with options to supercharge your potential profits all while protecting your trading account. So thanks for watching. I'm stock market coach and option trader Jason Brown signing off saying, remember, you never go broke taking a profit.